Hey guys and welcome to the first real TTT on Nordic RC Visions. TTT stands for Table Talk Talk and we got a tabletop and I'm gonna do a little talk about this little guy. So this is an SG1801 and I already got a 4K unboxing and first trail run out in the forest. With this one if you want to check that out and make up your own opinion about it but today we're just gonna talk about it and i'm gonna do an after the run review and share some of my personal opinions about this sg1801 it came in a box and the box is here and on it we can read that it's a rock crawler it's a four-wheel drive 4x4 four system 118 scale and 2.4 gigahertz system it's hobby graded with a rating of 14 plus years old so it comes in two versions this is the sg1802 and as far as i know the pickup truck version here is exactly the same as the 1801 just with a different body and body post it actually comes in four different colors. Today we've got the 1801 in the green color. Now, these really should be rated and reviewed against the price and it's pretty cheap still. It's not as cheap as when it was released late in the 2020 from two, three months ago. I think it retailed for about $50 there, but you can still get it for $55, $65. So still a lot lower than most of these mini RC crawlers. The problem that I have with this is more concerned with the rock crawler and 118 scale specification, but more about that later. It's a fully ready to run car. You get a 2.4 gigahertz radio. You get the small USB charger. You get a 2S LiPo and you get the car itself. Yeah, granted, it's not the largest battery in the world. It's a very small 350 milliamps per hour, but it still charges to 8.4 volts. It's a 2S LiPo and I really didn't have any trouble powering up this for the entire run so we will fire it up later in this video one of the good things is that it only takes an hour to charge this up with the supplied usb charger that you plug into your power supply or your computer and one hour and you're up and running now one other thing that i like about it is the radio and the two-in-one ESC system. You get a little manual for it. As I said, it comes in Chinese and in English. And you actually get a lot of protection systems like uh, LiPo cutoffs and locked rotor protection, overheat protection and everything in this. And yeah, a pretty neat feature for such a cheap car. Now, it's not the prettiest transmitter in the world and it feels cheap. Uh, yeah, because it is cheap, but it's actually a three channel radio. So it got the usual trims, steering and throttle. If you need to set that, it also got the reverse settings, but more importantly, you got the dual rate for the steering and you got three different options for the throttle here. As always, you have to supply your own AA batteries for the transmitter. It takes four of them and they go right in here. So far so good for the price anyway and we're slowly getting to the car itself. Now it comes with a Lexan body, all four versions does. And well, it's not the best looking body but it's pretty standard for these mini crawlers and it does the job, it makes it look like an off-road scale truck. So yeah, as expected, it's a ladder frame based chassis. We got the metal rails here. Everything else is plastic as far as I am concerned, except for small bits and tiny screws and all that. But a four-link suspension here with solid axles. 
everything is of course locked for off-road purposes it's a 4x4 system with the transmission centered here in the middle with the drive shafts for each axle we got the two in one esc receiver mounted up here we got a battery tray in the rear here and we got the servo up front so yeah pretty standard but there's still some pros and cons i think with this setup i think one of the neatest things are the is the three wire servo mounted up front here it's a tower pro nine milligram but more importantly it's a three wire servo so usually these comes with a five wire servo but this one is fully hobby grade so a cool thing for this price ratio another cool thing is that you can see the three channel on the ESC receiver here I think we will test that a bit later we got the white plug here that goes up to the two bright LEDs here and we got the on off switch here which is the push button which in my experience is a lot better in terms of water resistance and sand resistance than the usual switches so yeah so far so good what i don't like is this battery tray of course it makes climbing a bit difficult when there's a lot of weight high centered here with the electronics and the battery up here so it makes it a bit unstable the springs and suspension is set up nicely but i would have liked to see another battery mount system it's mounted also with a screw here so you have to screw it up and put the battery down and then put the screw back down again much easier setup and maybe up front could have been a lot nicer the tires are pretty good again for this price ratio feels pretty not there yeah pretty soft and pretty grippy for this price so thumbs up for that so all batteries are in and yeah i didn't charge the battery from yesterday's run so let's hope the LiPo cutoff doesn't kick in let's just fire her up see if she works definitely works and fully proportional both throttle and steering it's pretty fast that servo but they usually are these small ones you can see the throttle control here we got it on number three now and we can turn it to number two and one But we're slowly getting to the problem i think and that's this little tiny motor and if we got it on number one here and make an obstacle it just pretty much stalls all the way until it reaches full throttle number one couldn't do it so let's turn on the power yeah So that's pretty much the trouble that I have with these rock crawlers, as they call it. I think this should be labeled as an off-road truck, maybe a trail truck and definitely not a rock crawler. Because also, if you can see my video from yesterday, it's pretty difficult to keep slow. And if you turn this all the way down, you just lose so much power and it doesn't really go anywhere so i had it on number two on the entire run yesterday but if you really want to get over obstacles you have to jump them instead of crawling them so a pretty nice off-road truck but i wouldn't really call it a rock crawl i think it would have serious difficulties if it got on a rock getting back to the cool stuff let's just for one minute test this three wire if i can get 
this one inside here. Always a problem. So the third channel definitely works. It will probably also work with other things than LEDs. Here you can definitely very quickly get some tail lights and some front lights on your body if you wish so. Having a closer look at the wheels and wheel axles, I definitely don't, do not think that this is a working beat lock system. So the tires are glued to the wheels, but still nice tires, nice wheels. And we got, a, what is this, maybe five millimeter, seven millimeter hex and a small wheel nut. And we got the usual system. This is actually metal and yeah, bushings, which yeah, doesn't really matter too much with these cheap crawlers, but no bearings, but bushings, but that's fine with me. One other thing that will limit your crawling, and I find these this problem in many of these cars, is the loss of power when the servo is utilized. So if you go slow here and start turning, you need to squeeze the throttle a lot more down. So it makes it a lot more sensitive and difficult to crawl, but that's how it is with most of these small, tiny, cheap trucks. So a good trail truck, off-road truck, but not a crawler. The scale, 118 scale is far off. So it's definitely smaller than a 116. This is an RGG, which I really, really like, but it's pretty much more than twice as expensive than this one. We got a WPL C1, bit dusty, but it's definitely a lot bigger than the 118 scale here. This is supposed to be 116 scale as well. So we're getting down in scale and we got another 118 scale truck here. So this is supposed to be 118, this is supposed to be 118. This is a Hobby Plus CR18, a truck that I really, really like. Still twice as expensive as the SG1801 and 1802. But the CR18 Hobby Plus is definitely much, much larger. It's always difficult to show on film, but a much larger wheelbase on this one. Maybe the SG1801 is really a 124th scale or 122 scale. We got the Hobby Plus CR24, which is marketed as a 124th scale. And the wheelbase is maybe the SG is a bit longer, but it's a couple of millimeters. We got the RGG version one here, and I've definitely seen a couple of channels claim that these vehicles are exactly the same. This is a 124th scale, but if we take a closer look, there's definitely a lot of parts that they share. The wheelbase is still a bit longer on the SG, but nothing that can really determine it to be anything more scale. 118 scale compared to this 124 scale but yeah they definitely have a lot of similar parts the chassis rail got different mounting holes which may explain the slightly longer wheelbase this part is also different compared to the two and of course the battery system here is different on the ESC. So is it worth it? I can definitely understand why people were pretty excited when these were launched two or three months ago for like $49 or $50 I've seen. But for $66, which I think this one retails price at at the moment, the gap is really closing in on the Hubble Plus and the RGT, which by the way is the same as the FTX Outback Mini 2.0 and the F FTX Outback Mini 1.0. That's it folks. That was my first little attempt at a little TTT RC car review. 
I will try rehearsing getting them a little shorter in the future, but it's just difficult when you poke into all the details. Let me know if there's some suggestion, if I missed something that you would like to see featured in coming RC card reviews. Day is getting later, the video is getting longer and the kids upstairs are getting louder. So I better end this right now. I'll see you in the next TTT tabletop talk. And I hope you are doing great and having a great hobby time. Take care. Happy holidays and keep them running.